If you went in blind to a film like Con Air, the opening sequence would make you think it was a made-for-TV movie funded by a new money billionaire with the tackiest taste imaginable. It comes across like a pseudo-romance drama, tackling redemption by embracing the almighty American flag. And when the jukebox coughs up a bit of Shania Twain, you'd be forgiven for thinking, what in the fuck is this? As how do I get through one night without you? If I had to live without you, what kind of life would that be? Oh, I... Rings painfully in your ears. As if you're getting fucked in the eardrum by Chad Chlamydia cock. <laughs> Thankfully, however, the suffering is cut short by the following line. Because of pussies like you, we lost Vietnam, I'll tell you that. Which provokes our painfully obvious hero, Poe, into defending his hot ass Stacy trophy wife and kicking some serious ass. Poe kicks so much ass, in fact, he winds up in prison for manslaughter. The film then wisely skims through its time inside with a comically quick montage, allowing us to skip the security check altogether and just get aboard the fucking plane already. But this isn't just any old plane. No, 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 my son. No, no, not on your Nelly. This is a one and only flight of a lifetime. This is Con fucking Air. Oh, stewardess, stewardess, what's the in-flight movie today? Well, I think you'll like it, Cyrus. It's called I'll Never Make Love to a Woman on the Beach Again. And it's preceded by the award-winning short, No More Steak for Me Ever. <laughs> the brilliance of this film is how wholeheartedly it embraces its sheer implausible stupidity. After a shaky, albeit cheesy, and pretty cringe start, which in fairness does take care of all that tedious exposition bollocks quicker than Chad planning his weekend of hookups on Tinder, where wham, bam, thank you fucking ma'am, straight into the action. For the sake of whatever, I'll give a brief summary of the plot. After the mic is finally cut on Shania Twain, Shut up, bitch! Poe served his time inside and got his ticket home. All he needs to do now is sit back and try and get some shut-eye on the flight. Only this flight is also transporting some of the most nefarious criminals the good old US of A has to offer for some reason, and led by Cyrus the Virus, the cons are gonna do what a cons do best, much to Poe's dismay. After a hell nah instead of a yee-haw, they hijack the plane, a flight of which they've somehow been privy to for months, after taking out a dipshit DEA officer. From there, Poe's not only gotta work out how to survive the ordeal and get back to his hottie good girl wife, but also stop Johnny 23 from raping the token Mexican security officer and prevent his not so magical insulin challenged black friend from dying. I'm not sure if Conair ripped this friendship off from Forrest Gump, but it sure fucking seems like it. They even stole the same black guy from the film. Anyway, whenever his black buddy dishes out words of wisdom, he loses insulin, causing him to be more of a hindrance to our hero than anything mystical. Due to his sense of integrity, honour, respect, and God-given sense of responsibility to always do the right thing because he's white, Poe's got a whole lot of shit to do. This is why, ladies and gents, they call it the white man's burden. The silent, silent people shall weigh your gods and you take up the white man's burden. As expected, Poe throws a spanner into the convict's masterminded, dastardly plan, wreaking havoc in the sky, on the ground, in Las Vegas, and where the fuck ever else they end up. There's death, explosions, gunfights, car chases, double crossing, and everything else you'd expect from an action flick, but the beauty of Con Air is the comedy behind all of the events, whether inadvertent or not. Yeehaw! It's on your mind, hillbilly. What was I thinking about? Oh yeah, yeehaw, that's right. It's a film that fully embraces its stereotypes, from the cheesy, hero and villain signaling musical score to the typecast list of Hollywood names. 
creating a brilliantly hilarious satire on celebrity culture and fame. This is no way to treat a national treasure. Let him out. You sure? Love your work. In arguably my favourite scene, the cons and what they're most infamous for is described on a CCTV system akin to a camera crew smoozing up to airheaded celebs on the red carpet. John Cusack's commentary of the prisoners and their litany of antisocial sins holds a bated breath of being starstruck and perpetually in awe, where in the most blatant contrast, Cole Meany holds him and the convicts in utter contempt, dismissing them each as nothing but monsters and animals. After getting more than a glimpse of the goings-on behind the Hollywood curtain over recent years, it's difficult to decide which one of them is right. Well, you better start contemplating, because this is a situation that needs to get unfucked right now! Accompanying this parody of the celebrated comes a whole host of memorable sound bites, quotes and idioms that really have no right to be featured in such a flick. In all honesty, I'd even list Con Air as one of the movies that cemented my love of the English language. You lost your mind? According to my last psych evaluation. Yes. Using such blatant archetypes paves the way for some of the best one-liners you'll ever hear in a film. From not just the cheesy, pun-esque play on words you'd expect from such a flick, but also well-composed and, dare I say, philosophical zingers that silkily escape from the mouth of the most Dharma and John Wayne Gacy-esque character. He's a font of misplaced rage. Name your cliché. Mother held him too much or not enough. Last pick that kicked ball, late night sneaky uncle, whatever. Now he's so angry, moments of levity actually cause him pain. Gives him headaches. Happiness for that gentleman hurts. And there's even other little quips peppered in that you just wouldn't hear in today's tepid, overly sanitized and boring ass landscape. Boy, you are one skinny negro. Easy, man. Open Shit. up. Oh man, it smells like so much shit in your mouth. Told me you loved me. <laughs> Get out of my face. All right, all right. Yeah. After crash landing in Vegas, the movie needlessly finishes itself off with a motorcycle and fire truck cat and mouse chase simply because why the fuck not? It adds diddly squat to the plot, furthers no character's arc, and feels like it was thrown in just because they still had a few million left over for the pyrotechnics. We know Cyrus and Diamond Dog have no fucking chance of escape and that Poe and Larkin, naturally, are both more than capable of riding motorcycles at high speeds after a whole day of escaping death by the skin of their teeth. Once again, however, the film is celebrating its absurdity, only now in pure, unadulterated and utterly superfluous action. And it's fucking great. I would say it's a shame there aren't more films out there like this, but I don't think such flicks come about through much foresight. John Malkovich wasn't happy during production because the script kept getting rewritten every day and Dave Chappelle reportedly improvised most of his dialogue. Look like you want to scalp a nigga. So really, Conair just works somehow because everyone involved put their fucking cock into it. Oh, nothing makes me sadder than the agent lost his bladder in the airplane. It's Jim Bro macho and completely unashamed of it working only because it's a one in a million long shot that somehow came up with the goods. A film that relishes the medium of filmmaking itself, whilst also being a complete satire of it. I could go on, but this is where I'll leave on a jet plane, not knowing when I'll be back again. So, say Anara. Ah!